Welcome to this special edition by Union Solidarity International. We are absolutely delighted to be joined by our great comrade Valter Sanchez from Brazil today who's going to talk about a number of the pertinent issues affecting his movement in Brazil at the moment and of course we will touch on events as they continue to unfold in Brazil with the social protests which brought nearly two million people out onto the streets yesterday. Walter, it's a pleasure to have you with us once again, comrade. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. I know that there is a plenary session that is ongoing at the moment with CNM Cute. Do you want to just tell our listeners and viewers, Walter, some of the issues that are up for discussion with the movement in Brazil at the moment? Well, uh, well, the, the plenary session is like a small con congress uh, from our, our national union and uh, our national confederation of our system. Um, and uh, it was uh, supposed to, to discuss the main issues that we're struggling at the moment and uh, the coup as, as in general, the, 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 the whole confederation of, of trade unions in Brazil, we're struggling against. Uh, there is a project in the Congress about outsourcing that is very dangerous for workers' organizations. So it's something that we are fighting for. The reduction of uh, work time. There's also some projects in the Congress uh, dealing with this issue. And um, some things about uh, a, a project that, that we're, we're, we want to, to set back about the pensions. Uh, it's called Fator Previdenciario. It's like um, a, a reduction factor which, that was uh, issued in the, in the pensions of all workers uh, about uh, uh, 15 years ago in the previous government, so uh, that's something that we are also struggling with. This, just to mention some main issues. And, and then the discussion yesterday was uh, with the metal branch that we represent about 800,000 workers in Brazil and uh, was uh, re putting the, 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 the agenda about uh, the unification of uh, of the of the, the the campaigns that we we call contract negotiations because we have in different times of the year uh, negotiations are made in, in, in the states where we're not ha we don't have uh, any national negotiation system that's what we struggle for. Thanks and, for that update. That's that's brilliant. A lot very key issues at play at the moment then f that your members are discussing, Walter? Yes, um, uh, and, uh, in parallel to, the, to all the issues that I mentioned that uh, about the outsourcing, about reduction of work time, uh, it's an issue that we're struggling uh, trying to put pressure on the government and on the Congress because there are issues that are being uh, discussed in the Congress. It depends on, on law. Um, and we're also discussing uh, the issues of the metal branch alone. So, like the, the struggle for a national contract, exchanging um, uh, some, some issues that are common in all the state negotiations. So we're trying to build the national negotiation by putting the same issues in the in the struggle in all the states in which we negotiate. Um, so, and of course, uh, everybody at the moment in Brazil is concerned about the, the mass um, the protests that are taking place in Brazil. Uh, it's, it's still very early to to make an, a, a, a comprehensive analysis of, of what's going on because it's, uh, it's something that is brand new. Uh, you can't find a parallel uh, with other countries because when you talk about the, the Arab Spring, uh, it was against uh, 
dictatorial regimes, when you talk about um, in Spain and, and in Greece and everything, it was something against uh, the, um, the austerity the policies of the government. Austerity problems, uh, austerity issues, and austerity policies of the government. And when you say about Turkey, it's a very repressive regime. And so we have uh, nothing like it, this in Brazil. So we're totally in the in the in the in the other hand of the of, of the way. There are uh, Brazil, uh, although it's not growing like uh, all the, the 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 emerging markets, but it's growing. We we have we, the economy general economy is good. It's, Generating jobs, so new jobs. The 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 wages are increasing. The minimum wage is increasing. So more people are being included. Like we we discussed in the last uh, teleconference that we had. But um, on the other hand, there is a a sense that uh, living in the big cities like uh, Sao Paulo or Rio or Belo Horizonte, Salvador, uh, it's really the quality of life in the, in the big towns. It's not, uh, they're not improving in the same way as the social standards in Brazil. So poor quality of public transportation, that was the, the issue that started all the protests was about uh, the, the race in, in, the, in the bus fares and bus metro and, and subway and, and trains fares that uh, were raised. And so that was the, the initial uh, the spark. issue of the, the, the protests. And, but it, uh, there was a, a reaction about the policy. There was a very uh, a very violent uh, reaction and police brutality in Sao Paulo last Thursday, uh, last week, and that was kind of a spark that uh, made it all blow. Yeah, uh, and so people reacted as 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 well as as the as the, the repression that took, took place. Yeah, Walter, you're absolutely right. In, in our previous conversations, we've spoken about the, the massive progress that has been made in Brazil, the tens of millions of people that have been lifted out of poverty, particularly with the policies of President Lula that have been, been carried on. And it's, it's very interesting to see uh, the social protest movements across the world and to find common themes and Brazil seems to be an exception, as, as you've spoken about, because, of course, it's a growing economy. There is a democratic government. But one of the issues that seems to have came to the fore is not only the rising costs of living, but do people feel disenfranchised at all, Walter, that their voices aren't being heard by politicians? Is that a common theme that perhaps unites Brazil with other countries? Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it's, I think it's too early to evaluate, but um, we can say that the, the vast majority of the people that are taking part in the protests are young, young people, uh, and we as uh, unions and, uh, we're, have long time by uh, acting in social, uh, uh, within the social <clears throat> movement. So we welcome all the young people that uh, are finally learning to fight for their rights, fight for their agenda. So that's the, the positive part of all, of all that. I think, um, uh, so in that sense, <clears throat> we as unions, we are, we decided to join the, the protests. Uh, we are already uh, taking part of, in the protests in in in, in some uh, places and, and and putting on our agenda together with that, but on the other hand, it's a it's a it's a very uh, I, I wouldn't say 
confusing uh, way of struggling because it's it's I would say rather say it's unusual in in a new way like it's a kind of a horizontal uh, yeah organized absolutely. or unorganized movement so it's something that uh, there are no leaders there are no uh, social organizations behind them there are no um, a clear uh, demand list so uh, people have very uh, different uh, approaches and uh, demands and so they have this kind of feeling that they they're ready to change the world ready to change the country and that's a very post positive feeling but it's not uh, we can see the focus yeah uh, and it would be good to, to see the focus because the first issue of the struggle, which was the the, 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 the raise about the, the fares of the public transportation, it was already a victory of the movement because most of the mayors and uh, governors of the states decided to withdraw the raise in the in the in the bus and the public transportation fares. So it's a victory of the moon. So, but uh, uh, at, at the same time, people are presenting various others, uh, other other uh, items, and, and so it's uh, kind of confusing. And moreover, you can you can say, uh, let's say, if the government wants to negotiate the demand list, so, so who could the government discuss with? Yeah, or the government. And, uh, or the Congress, because some of the issues are directed to the Congress, so it's difficult. It's um, so it's something that uh, the movement, uh, if it continues like this, it has to to be uh, solved. And but the, yesterday there was something a, a little bit concerning because. Um, I would say in in two two main uh, two of the protests because it was a national wide in the major cities in Brazil uh, about more than a million people in the streets and uh, especially in Brasilia and in Rio de Janeiro there was a lot of violence uh, from the protesters and so that was very concerning because. That was also some uh, um, kind of a. We saw lots of people in a Nazi style taking part in the protests and uh, creating problem with the the, the left, just like uh, unionists or parties, left parties um, flags, and so uh, some right wing that are within the movement and uh, some infiltration that is something that we we should take care of because it's it's been very very uh, weird uh, all this violence uh, yesterday they they tried to break the 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 palace of the uh, foreign foreign ministry so and it's a very strange because the foreign ministry uh, has nothing to do with all those um, the issues that are lots of them they are very diffuse and very uh, comprehensive uh, agenda and uh, has nothing to do with it so it's still something to to that we are very concerning about this right wing orientation and uh, if you can, if you see that it's a very horizontal young people with a low experience of, about struggling, so it's something a little bit concerning. Walter, that's absolutely fascinating, and I know our edition of Daily Outrage yesterday, which USI does on a, on a daily basis to talk about some of the the themes and issues that are happening across the world of relevance to our labour movement. We touched upon the exact point that you made about the amorphous and horizontal nature of the protests, wherever they may be, at Gezi Park in Turkey or whether it's in Brazil, but 
there is no structuring of the protests into a list of aims and objectives that people would like to see come to fruition. And I think this is a very important point and where our movement can play its part, Walter, wondering if you agree with this, like in the same way in Turkey, the unions have supported the protest, but they have brought issues and demands which they want the government to hear. And up until now, in various protest movements, there is very little coherency in what they are actually wanting from the government. What you said, what are the demands that the government and the Congresses can listen to? How is the union movement playing its part in Brazil to try and give coherency to the, the frustrations that people have? Um, well, I, I think it's uh, it's, it's still uh, very uh, it's a very new way of, of dealing with uh, with this. So we're uh, joining them uh, like uh, we're together. Every everybody says about there are some issues about uh, discussions that are ongoing in the Congress. There are issues about, um, for example, there is a part of the people which are uh, are not in favor about uh, all the investment that was made to to hold the, the World Cup in Brazil. And uh, now we're in the in the Confederations Cup that is taking place at the moment. So people are they say that it's not worth it, it's not valid, and even if we are like the, the, the country of the football, but um, even though there are lots of people which are, they, they say that uh, the government should rather put the money in uh, public health and public education and transportation and so on. Um, but most of the investment that was made was about the public urban mobility. So, uh, so there are some contradictions uh, which we have to to wait and see. But uh, at the moment, uh, because of the the violent uh, protest that uh, that happened yesterday. I think uh, it's time for the governments to to have a say because so far they most of them, except for them that were um, except for them that were um, uh, that had to deal with uh, public affairs of transportation, uh, most of the governments didn't say anything about it. So President Dilma told that she was <clears throat> in favor. Of people fighting for their rights, uh, that's something that is like her history of life. Absolutely. Uh, but anyways, now it's the time that they have to say something, whether the government is going to do something about the various points about the demand list, or uh, if there will be an agenda in who would be the, the counterpart uh, about to talk to, to negotiate to. So it's, it's a moment in which we, there's still lots of things to, to see. And uh, of course we are offering to people who are, who are able to discuss within the movement, we are offering our experience about negotiations to, to, to be part of, it, of all this. Uh, discussions, if ever they take place. So. Walter, that's, that's absolutely fascinating and shows the value, I think, of having this conversation today to get the perspective of our movement in Brazil and how it is playing its role in trying to provide a focus to some of the issues that people are protesting about and that the offer is there from our comrades in Brazil to assist the, the, assist the protesters in putting some of their issues into demands that they can negotiate with the relevant authorities. I think that's a, a brilliant 
conversation that we've had today, Valter, and we look forward to sharing this with people around the world so that they have a greater insight to what people in Brazil are saying, but importantly, from our movement's perspective. So it only leaves me to thank you, Valter, for your contribution to USI once again and for your ongoing support. We greatly appreciate it, comrade. Thank you, Andrew, and uh, we'll stay in touch. And, and uh, big uh, readings about for, for all the comments that are changing the